Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and I am back with an update on my Linux gaming video that I did a few weeks ago. As a refresher, we installed Bazite, which is a great gaming-centric Linux distribution, onto a gaming laptop that was powered by an NVIDIA GPU. I was disappointed with the performance versus Windows. I got a lot of feedback, as you can imagine, from folks saying that it's all NVIDIA's fault, it's the drivers. Try out an AMD-based GPU, so that is what we're going to do today. And on the desk, I've got a bit of a science experiment here. Uh, this is a GMK Tech uh, Evo T1 mini PC on the bottom here. This has an Intel Core 9 processor, uh, 285H. And then on top of it, I have another GMK Tech device. This is their external GPU. This is called the AD-GP1. And this has an RX 7600 MXT GPU inside with eight gigabytes of RAM. And we have it connected to the mini PC via Oculink, which is a direct-to-bus connection to allow you to expand some of these mini PCs and laptops that have one of these ports. So this is pretty much the same deal as plugging a card directly into a desktop PC. And this is the only AMD configuration I had kicking around. So I thought, let's give it a shot and see how it works, because I know a lot of you are into eGPUs. So that is what we're going to do today. We're going to see how well it runs on this. Installation was not that hard at all. All the hardware got detected automatically, including the GPU. So the uh, first steps here were very encouraging so far. But why don't we dive deeper into this now and take a look and see what the performance is looking like. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that both the mini PC and the GPU came in free of charge from GMK Tech. However, no other compensation was received. They have not reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see how Linux gaming is working on an AMD GPU. All right, so we're going to start things off here with a benchmark running in Cyberpunk 2077. This was the same one that we ran in the other video. And right now I've got the settings on their medium preset. And earlier when this was running on the Windows side, this concluded with about 131.06 frames per second at 1080p with those medium settings. So why don't we take a look and see uh, what we're getting here. Now, of course, the frame rates that it reports at the end of that benchmark, or this benchmark, uh, is an average of what it sees over the course of things. And just glancing at that frames per second counter, it looks like we are a lot closer this time than we were when we had this test running on the NVIDIA GPU. So initially here, things are looking rather positive. But why don't we let this finish playing out and when it is done, we will take a look at the final results. But everything looks pretty nice here, and it seems to be running pretty smoothly. So let's let this conclude, and then we will see what the benchmark delivers. And I'm just kind of talking here to fill space because we're going to see that result right now. And here we are at 127.77. So this is pretty much within the margin of error versus what we got on the Windows side a few minutes ago with the same settings. So that is very encouraging here to see that we've got pretty much an equilibrium of performance. And I would imagine if I didn't have this shoehorned thing here, uh, this might work a little better perhaps on the Linux side as some other reviewers benchmarks have suggested. So yeah, I think it looks like Nvidia was part of the problem uh, in getting this to work. And what's been great so far is that this was turnkey and that's what I was looking for when I made the first video. How easy can you just take a Linux distribution, spin it up, and start playing games. I did nothing to this. I didn't do anything in the command line. I just plugged everything in and it worked. Pretty cool stuff. Why don't we take a look at something else while we're here? All right, so here is No Man's Sky. I've got this running on the enhanced settings at 1080p and I'm getting about 60 frames per second. It sometimes goes a little bit above like it is right now and other times it dips a little bit lower. I'll give you a better view of it here. This is my new Starship, my new Corvette. Isn't this cool? Um, so yeah, it seems to be working pretty well here and on par with the performance that I got out of this when I was on the Windows side. It doesn't feel like I'm getting that performance hit that I was getting earlier. So this is also uh, a pretty good gaming experience on No Man's Sky. All right, I encountered my first compatibility issue here and this is with Red Dead Redemption 2. I am of course a purchaser of it and I have it in my Steam library, but I'm not able to get the game to boot up. It looks like others in the Bazite community have had some issues with this as well. So this is the first thing that hasn't been a plug and play experience. Let's try something else just to see what it looks like and then we will wrap this up. All right, one last game to check out here and that is Terminator Resistance. You might see a little bit of screen tearing here. That's more of a function of my capture right now than it is the game. 
Uh, but it seems to be working well. I'm at 4K uh, with the medium settings, and we're getting about 60 frames per second. It'll dip down a little bit if we saw some more activity in the game, but still about what I see on Windows with this hardware, and it looks like it's functioning well, despite the fact that this is, in fact, a Windows game uh, running with the uh, Valve uh, Proton layer. So all good stuff here, and certainly a lot better experience with this hardware running with an AMD GPU than we saw on the NVIDIA stuff a little bit earlier. So I want to thank everyone for reaching out and encouraging me to try this again with AMD hardware. This was much closer to a turnkey gaming solution than we saw on the NVIDIA side, so that was encouraging. And if you've got AMD hardware, you may want to just give it a shot and see if it improves your gaming experience. It might, actually, if you've got maybe some higher-end stuff than I've got here. And I was reminded as I was working on this that 10 years ago, I did a video on the Steam machines that came out in 2015. The one that I looked at was from Alienware. This was really nice hardware. It booted up to Steam OS, the original iteration of it, long before the Steam Deck ever existed. And unfortunately, the compatibility wasn't there with those machines. In fact, I did a video talking about how well the machine ran in Windows because none of the Windows games would run on the Linux side. But we've certainly come a long way with the Proton compatibility layer. So many games run quite well, uh, with the exception of Red Dead Redemption 2, at least on this distribution. And I think we're getting very close to maybe seeing some of these dedicated machines come back that will ship with a Linux operating system versus Windows and will be better optimized for the gaming environment. So stay tuned, more to come, but I wanted to do this follow-up because a lot of you wanted to see it, so hopefully this answers some questions. That will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.